Warning! Graphic pest control video ahead. Do not watch if you might be offended. If, however, you really like pest control videos, then sit back and watch us as we control pest populations with silenced air rifles here in the UK. Viewers of our other videos will no doubt recognise this as our peed up feeder, but if you stand in the hedge you will anyway. I've arrived to go shooting and found it has come loose from the top screw and spun around dropping the contents on the floor. Which has then been hoovered up by the local wildlife, leaving only a few husks and a few wood chips behind. Completely empty. On right in the feeder, the wood chips appear to be from a sustained attempt to get into it by chewing a large enough hole. It must have ran nearly empty and a few lovely peanuts were left inside. They must have been shaking away at it trying to get in. And that, coupled with an appropriate number and length of screw, resulted in the thing coming loose. There's damage all over it. So I decide to leave it upright, debate whether to shoot it anyway or go to the wheat feeder, which I passed on my way up. So I saw the wheat on the floor, so something has been on it. So I decide the wheat feeder is the best bet because of the food and make my way to it. I'm not there long, and movement catches my eye as this mouse runs forward to steal some loose grains of wheat. I find him again and watch to see what he does. He seems to be feeding happily. The mouse activity seems to be on the up in all of our shoots. If the numbers rise, we might have to take more drastic action than just watching. And I sped this bit up a bit as he was there quite a while. He's safe under that tree from aerial attack. He eventually moves forward and checks the coast is clear. Then he legs it. This fat wood pigeon arrives and pays no attention to the hide as it eyeballs the grain. One of them was probably responsible for tilting the maize feed if I landed on it, I think to myself as I pan after it. It's moved in straight to feed on the feeder and ignores the grain on the floor. So I start to get ready to shoot. I want to shoot the head for a quick kill so the meat isn't damaged for the scopes. But it bobs in and out of my scope picture relentlessly. It is frustrating, but I'll just have to wait for an opportunity to take a lethal shot. After a bit of waiting, it then tries to change sides and I track it waiting for an opportunity. As it turns its back, I take a low neck shot, on instinct really, and I see the pigeon drop from my sight picture. I reloaded, and as I'm sure of the shot, I pan down to the fallen bird to see it's not dead, so I load up in the head, take a swift finishing shot. And then I succumb to my man flu and have a little cough. I'm back on mouse watch and it's the most interesting thing going at the moment. It seems to have a nest in that big log at the back. Then a crow lands and I freeze as I watch it forage, rolling logs with its foot, looking for insects and worms. I did get my rifle through the hole but something caught its eye in the distance and it flew away. Just after that, movement up the bank caught my eye, and the squirrels have started to play. Just my luck, as I would have been a lot closer if I'd have chosen to sit on the empty feeder. These two seem to be playing rather than aggressive behaviour. And eventually, one of them sits down, and I was reaching for my laser rangefinder, and wondering just how far it is. Sitting in a nice stable position, Then it hears the other one on the other side of the tree and gives chase. I see movement back on the feeder and look over to see this freak of a bird, which looks very much like a robin that's had an argument with a jet engine and lost. But other than that, it seems to be okay. It's quite amazing how many animals come to view a feeder that was empty this morning. It's been put back up the right way. When they come to inspect it, they must obviously be worth their while. 
This one's obviously had a free feed here before. It's picking up bits and pieces. This female squirrel has a very good look at the feeder. I was gutted that I made the wrong choice. All I could do was look on and notice her very strange short tail. She must have damaged it when she was younger is my best guess. It's obvious to see just how easily a couple of them jumping all over it and chewing on the wood could have caused it to fall, given the poor fixings we used. But you live and learn and it looks like I'm at school today. She isn't put off very easily by the fact there's no peanuts in it. She climbs on top, has a look for the clear perspex front. She must be annoyed her lovely peanuts are all gone. So eventually she gives up and climbs down. Has one last look. And goes to the ground to continue her foraging. Not long after, I see more movement in the trees, so squirrels continue to run about without a care. I just focus on the general area to see what I could pick up when I spot the female descending to the ground near the feeder tree again. I then spot her sat still on the ground motionless by the feeder tree that I had lasered at 60 to 65 yards. I know my aim point for that distance and the shot has presented itself. I quickly find on the sight picture, slip the safety off and steady myself ready to take the shot. You can just make out the path of the pellet as it takes its arc towards her head, knocking her on the side. I can make out the kicks, I know the head shot was good. As I pan back for a bit of perspective, she kicks into the air and lands down the bank a bit further as she comes to rest against a fern. No more movement is seen, so I decide to wait a bit longer to see if anything else happens along. And there she is in a red circle. It's worth a look at the arc of the pellet again in slow-mo and close-up. A wren keeps trying to come to the hide with me every so often. Then I realise there's a nest in there. So I call it a day and go to inspect my kills. This is where the short-tailed female came to rest. I'd already poked her with a rifle barrel and was fairly sure she was dead. But I still tugged on her toe. Sure I wasn't in danger of a nasty bite, I proceeded to inspect my aim point. I caught it just to the right of the ear and across my premier had punched a neat little hole into her brain. I was aiming just left at that point and was pleased with the accuracy of my shooting. Good clean kill there. And there's her funny little tail. I'm not sure how that happened, but she didn't seem hampered by it. And the wood pigeon that took a follow up shot was next. The headshot had destroyed the brain and made quite a mess. I'm trying to guess where I'd aimed. It was difficult when the pigeon was stretched upwards. I'm a little low in my guess. Looks like I'd peeled its cap with my second shot. Part of the skull there. So there we have it. Two kills and my lovely rapid on what turned out to be an okay day after a poor start. Lessons have been learned and you're never too old to be schooled. And the shot impact investigation reveals I hit the pigeon a little left of my aim point, which is probably due to the bird moving right and my not allowing for it. I'm processing the kills for the table again, and the skates will get this pigeon breast. I do like to peel the breast out on the bone as I think it looks better presented that way. The heart is located behind the breastbone and a wall of muscle, and to hit it would almost certainly mean meat damage. So I quickly guesstimate the aim point for a heart shot if ever I need to take one. The layer of feathers make it difficult to judge, so I'll probably continue to go for head shots and lower neck. The bird song you can hear out of my garden because the window is open on this gorgeous spring day. And there is the breast on the bone with the heart by the side for the size comparison. It's 
It's about the same size as a squirrel heart by my reckoning. Two more bits of meat for the scouts to try. My Jack Pike skinny knife. And now neatly wrapped in cling film for the freezer. Over to Bro now. This one was on the feeder before he could even turn his camera on. Then looks intently ahead for a moment as Bro slips the safety catch off. Then resumes feeding as Bro is tracking the squirrel and waiting for an opportunity to take a headshot. It freezes again. Bro takes up the travel on the first stage of the two stage trigger and waits for opportunity. He delivers a pellet to the squirrel's brain, dropping it to the floor. And a few muscle spasms and reflex kicks. The shot's good, the brain has been hit. The second squirrel has arrived and it's sat on the feeder very quickly again before Bro can start his camera. Here he is centering up on the squirrel. Once he's done that he gets his rifle ready. This one looks like it's feeding confidently. Presents a good target, very little movement. Bro slips to safety again, lines up on the squirrel. He takes a shot, knocking it off the feeder. This one's a bit more of a kick than the last one. Kicks over into the ivy. Comes to rest there. This cock pheasant turns up. Seems unfazed by the corpses as he feeds happily away. As he feeds, another squirrel arrives and approaches the feeder. Even if a little bit cautiously. But he goes straight on the wheat. They're too much trouble at all. Looks like he's noticed the two dead bodies on the floor now. He advances to the one side of the feeder to have a better look or look of it. Seems happier feeding with them two in sight. So Bro lines up on him with his rifle and drops him to the ground. The pheasant is looking at the fallen squirrel as it has a good kick and must be wondering what the hell's going on. The pheasant has wandered off, so Bro goes to check his shot placement. Three down, a lot better result than my effort. So well done, Bro. Has a nice shot above the eye and into the brain. No exit wound by the look of it, so he's taking the full force of his rifle. Can't quite make it the impact point on this one. But bleeding from the both ears, serious enough. Quite clearly a headshot there. Third and final squirrel. It's a nice obvious wound, straight into the top of the head, into the brain. And not a gonad in sight. Well done bro, the therapy must be well worth the money. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.